everybody, it's Dollar here at Championships, checking in with legendary 1323 Mad Town Robotics here with the Rally, and we're going to be doing a great overview of this robot. Of course, talking about all the awesome things that go into this. Their transfer process is absolutely sick. Of course, we're talking about this multi-stage elevator, everything that goes into this, a lot of mechanical focus on this robot, so pay attention and learn more about Mad Town and the robot here in Rescape, coming up on Behind the Buffers. This video on fun is brought to you by our viewers, supporters, members, and also in partnership with the following. Build your alliance with so many other FIRST alumni who go to Kettering University. Every student at Kettering experiences their cutting-edge co-op programs that seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds. Kettering co-ops are a fully immersive working experience at the leading edge of industry. Head on over to kettering.edu slash FIRST to learn more about their incredible programs and to get more information. First teams benefit when they optimize their robots utilizing Altair tools. If you're utilizing Altair, submit a video showing your optimization skills and potentially win up to $5,000 for your team or $2,000 for yourself each quarter from now until June 30th, 2025. Download Altair tools for free and view contest details when you scan the QR code or go to altair.com slash contest. Really, so much to break down on this robot here. So let's start out with that uh, coral intake and just walk through all the different aspects that went into Mad Town's robot yeah. this year. So, like first things first, we have our coral ground intake right here, and then as we feed it in, right, you're gonna see that we have two rollers that actually suck in the pipe. And regardless of what the angle that we pick it up at, it's always gonna want to somewhat set, be somewhat center within our intake. And then from there, we have um, just like a sensor that detects when we have it in, and it cues up the entire like handoff portion. And this is how it ends up right after the handoff, like what you see right here. And once it's in here, we're able to just pretty much score um, L L2 through L4. Um, either from through the front or the back, depending which tag we see. Just like right here. Um, these are like all the levels that we're doing, and then we're gonna do the final L4. Can you talk to me some about the initial design process and some of the strategy that yeah. went into this robot? So every year when the game gets released, we always try to maximize uh, the robot functionality in every way we can actually score and put up points because we want to be like the perfect robot that's able to have the well-rounded alliance. We want to make sure we can do everything. We want to make sure we can do the L1 efficiently, L2, L3, and L4. We want to make sure, we essentially want to be able to put up as many points as we can during a match. That's how we target like everything. As we keep moving on here, like I said, so much to cover on this uh, with your end of factor, the elevator, so much more. What do you want to cover next? Uh, we could go into our ground um, algae intake as well. So right here, this is how we can actually pick up the algae from the ground on the field. It just gets sucked in through our algae intake and it gets pinched through our end effector as well. And then we're gonna do the uh, what we call a platypus mode right now, scoring in the actual, like scoring for the co-op point as well. That's the movement that we do. And then from there, we can also do the barge scoring. Or we want barge scoring? which is what you see right here. So that's how we're actually able to get the height with our four stage elevator. Now, M Mad Town last played week five yes. uh, for the competition. How has the competition evolved from week five here in the championship so far in terms of any meta game strategy that Mad Town is doing? Yeah, I mean, we've realized that in order to be able to maximize the amount of points we, we need we need to put up, um, we just need to do the, uh, we need to do a lot more of the L1s because we know teams have prioritized doing L2 to L4. So we know there's, there's always gonna be somebody that can do that, right? But we know people didn't really prioritize L1 because it's the least amount of points. But we realized we can actually do six pipes per face. We can do like the three stack, like two base layers and the one on the very top through like the, like the, the, through the use of both the algae intake and the coral intake. And we just pretty much like swipe off the coral from the intake onto, onto the actual reef itself. Can we dive more into the uh, elevator system they're using? I mean, I love just how compact this robot is and obviously multi-stages to get it yeah. going. Yeah, so the reason why we have four stages on our elevator is we knew that in order to get our starting configuration, we are going to have like the pivot on it, but in order to get within our frame perimeter, we knew it had to be short, and in order to compensate for the short stages, we had to just add, this, add more stages back in. So that's really the reason why we went for the four stage, in order to get the height that we needed for the barge, L4, and all of that. What other considerations did you have to make in terms of like packaging everything to get such a low clearance, that sort of thing? Uh, we're just making sure that everything was able to stow away like perfectly, right? Like even our, on, on our coral intake, we have hard tops down here. There's these little like stubs that you can kind of see right there. We're just, for us, it was really just making sure everything is packaged like perfectly fine. And like even in the carriage, right? 
uh, we we wanted to pack it as much as we can in the carriage to to like lower our center of gravity as much as we could, which is why we don't really have any motors up here other than this one. Um, and through because of that, we're able to power our differential gearboxes through here, right? So this is powers like the left side. The uh, this one right here powers the right side, and then this this X60 right here is able to power like um, our transmission from here for these rollers. If you want, if we can spin these, yeah, you can see how this one's able to spin right there, just like our off like the coaxial, like dead axle. And your climber, speaking about compact things as well too, your climber is super compact on the system. Yeah. Talk to me about the integration of all this, all this package. Yeah, so for the climber, we decided that it was going to be very easy to do the backpack climb rather than the winch, winch style climb that we were doing in the past. So how we do it is we have these two flex wheels right there. Those are spinning inwards to actually capture the pipe on the cage. And once it's in there, once we have the pipe in there, we have this um, diffuse proximity sensor right here. It pretty much scans for the like the distance that we tune it to. And once it knows it's in there, the entire portion of the climb is automated. Like that includes the pivot of the elevator, the feeding of the algae intake into our end effector as well. Very cool, Matt. Uh, anything else you want to highlight or cover on this awesome machine? Um, just like the amount of work that we put into it, like to actually make it on the way. Like the 115 for us, it was, it was a little harder for us, but that's also why we went for a smaller frame size. Instead of going like the typical 30, 30 by 30, we went 28 by 28. And then we just had to do a lot of testing with the materials that we use in order to make sure that we the trade-off that we did for the weight was the same for the for like the structural integrity of everything that we had on the robot. I'm gonna ask you maybe for a potential spoiler. Are there any uh, certain type of sweatshirts that certain mentors may be saving uh, for playoffs or anything like that at all? Yeah, yes, there, there, there is a dad sweater coming out. Well, obviously this will release after champs, but we look forward to seeing <laughs> what that is. Matt Town Rocks, thank you so much uh, for taking time. Awesome machine once again, and really you're awesome as All well right, too. Thank you. Uh, so we can't wait to see, of course, how you do. Okay, Thanks a lot. Thank you.